Welcome back to our SailRite Workbench. This is the fourth video in a series we're calling Learning to Sew. So whether you're new to sewing or you just need a refresher, this is the perfect place for you. In today's video, we're gonna be going over popular hems. Hemming is a basic sewing skill that is used on a wide variety of projects. A simple finished edge gives any sewing project a professional look. Besides style, hems can also provide function for your project. We're gonna demonstrate a variety of hems that are great to know, but if you're looking for a specific hem, you can also skip to that chapter. Before we go over hem techniques, we're first gonna go over some notions that can be helpful when sewing hems. We have some basting tape, pins, and clips. Each sewing aid has its advantages. Basting tape is a double-sided tape that holds two layers of fabric together. Some advantages of this notion is that it doesn't create holes in material, it's easier and faster to apply than pins when working on large fabric assemblies, plus it makes seams semi-waterproof. We often use basting tape in DIY project videos. It's great to use with bags, marine projects, and any other application where these qualities are desired. Next, we have fabric pins. These are the oldest sewing notions used to hold layers of fabric together. Some advantages of pins are that they're inexpensive, reusable, can hold multiple layers together, and it can be used for more than just hemming. We would recommend this notion for home decor projects, for sewing clothing, as well as any other sewing project where these qualities are desired. Lastly, we have fabric clips, which are a newer sewing notion to hit the market. Some advantages of clips are that they hold multiple layers together without piercing the fabric. They're reusable and they're easy to see. We will be using all of these notions to show a variety of hems. There is no standard hem size for any of these hems. Make sure to choose the size that is best suited for your project. First, we have the simplest of hems, which is a single hem. Here we have some lighter home decor fabric because this is the type of application that this hem is gonna be most used on. A single hem will have the edge folded over, leaving one of the raw edges exposed. So make sure to take that into consideration when you choose this hem. Once we have our edge folded, we're gonna be using some pins to hold it into place. So a tip when using pins is to make sure that you place the pin in a direction that's gonna be easy to remove as you sew. So if we bring our hem over to the sewing machine and we're sewing, we wanna make sure that the pins are coming towards us to make it easy to remove instead of going towards the foot. We're gonna place a couple pins in here. Now you typically place pins every six to eight inches on an application, but because this is just an example piece of fabric, we're gonna put two in here. Once we have that pinned into place, we're gonna take it under our foot and we're gonna turn the machine on. Then we're gonna be using our magnetic sewing guide to ensure a straight stitch. So we're gonna line our magnetic sewing guide up on the three quarter inch mark on our stitch plate. Just like we've learned in our previous learning to sew videos, we're gonna be holding our thread ends back for the first few stitches. Then we're gonna reverse stitch to back stitch over our stitches. Then once we approach a pin, we're gonna remove it and continue to sew. When we're at the end, we're gonna back stitch. And then you have a single hem. There's a variation to the single hem if you'd like to install hardware on your hem. A regular hem will not be strong enough to hold a grommet or fastener, so you can actually add a layer of webbing to add strength to the hem. So you're gonna start by adding some basting tape to the edge of your fabric. Then you're gonna add basting tape to the edge of your webbing. For this hem, you can either have the webbing right up against the first line of basting tape and then fold the edge over, just like so, or you can have the webbing further down so that the hem fully covers the webbing. That's totally your personal preference. For our example, we're gonna be showing you how to do it with it up against the top edge. We're first gonna remove the transfer paper on the webbing, and you're going to wanna make sure that the basting tape side of the webbing is at the bottom. So we're gonna line it up really close to the top edge of the basting tape and press that down, then remove the transfer paper on the top and fold the edge down. 
All right, now that the edge is folded down, we're gonna sew it into place. We're gonna be sewing a stitch along the top edge and the bottom edge of the webbing. Now you have a single hem with webbing. Moving on to a rolled hem. This is a simple hem that will have finished edges on both sides of the fabric. So we're gonna start by folding our fabric a quarter inch down. Then we're gonna fold our fabric again one inch down. Then we're gonna use some pins to hold it into place. Now we're gonna take it over and place it under the foot. Again, we're gonna be using our magnetic sewing guide just to ensure a straight stitch line. And that is a rolled edge. The next hem that we have is a double hem. This hem is similar to a single hem, but like the name implies, it has two folds, which is gonna hide the raw edge and provide fabric strength. Since this hem is often used in conjunction with hardware like grommets, we're gonna be using a marine canvas fabric and we're gonna be using basting tape. So we're gonna take our basting tape and we're gonna apply it along the top edge of our fabric. The size of your hem is completely dependent on what you're gonna be using your fabric for. So that sometimes depends on the size of your grommet or just the look that you're going for. We're gonna be using a one inch hem just for our example. So we're gonna fold it over, just like so. Then we're gonna take our basting tape and again apply it to this top edge. We're gonna remove the transfer paper and roll it over again. Then we're gonna take it to our sewing machine. For this hem, you can either have just one stitch at the bottom or you can stitch at the bottom and at the top for a more finished look, but it's your personal preference. We're gonna show you for this example how to stitch on both sides. Again, we're gonna be using our magnetic sewing guide for a straight stitch. It looks like our hem is a little bit bigger than one inch, so we're just gonna move it slightly out. This is what it's gonna look like with one stitch and we're gonna apply a second one on the top. For this stitch, we're gonna remove our magnetic sewing guide and we're gonna use the edge of the inside presser foot as our stitch guide. This is what the double hem with both stitches will look like. Now we will show you how to sew a bound hem. With this hem, you'll use binding to hide the raw edge of the fabric. This hem is typically used for biminis, dodgers, and bags, but it's not great for fastener installation, so keep that in mind. This hem can be very fast and professional for large applications, and it's best achieved with a binder attachment. So we're gonna slide our binder into place, which we've already installed onto our sewing machine bed. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide my binding into the binder feeder. And then another side note just for our machine is we went ahead and moved our needle to the right position just to be able to sew this binding easier. Then we're gonna take our fabric and slide it into the little uh, fold of the binder. Then we're gonna lower our presser foot and then we can sew this hem. It's really as simple as that. As long as you make sure the fabric is in the fold of the binder, it's really as simple as that. It doesn't take any more work. 
It perfectly feeds the binding and works together with the walking feet to provide professionally bound hems with ease. There's a bound hem. We have four binder attachments at Sailrite that sew all the most common binding widths for whatever you're making. Our binders come in the following sizes, three quarters inch, one inch, one and a quarter inch, and two inch. And you can find them all on our Sailrite website. We have a variation of this hem that would allow for hardware installation. A variation of this hem that will allow for hardware installation would be to add a layer of webbing in between the binding. We already have our binding in our binder feeder from the last hem. And this time we're gonna slide both the webbing and the fabric in the binder crease. Something to note with this type of hem is to make sure that you're using a webbing that will fit in the binder feeder attachment. So we're gonna be using this two inch seatbelt webbing just for an example. With this hem, we're also gonna sew a line of stitches at the bottom of the webbing to hold it into place. That is a bound hem with webbing installed. Moving on to a taped edge. This hem is typically used for tarps and trampolines. For this hem, we're gonna be using a shelter right tape material that's six inches wide, and we're gonna be using a piece of trampoline mesh fabric. So start by folding the shelter right strip in half to make a crease. So once you have that crease line, you can go ahead and add uh, a piece of basing tape to each of the longer edges. Then you can go ahead and remove the transfer paper. Now we're gonna line our trampoline mesh fabric up right against the crease line. And then fold the other half over. Now we're gonna sew this into place and we're gonna sew a stitch line on each edge and down the middle. You can have three stitches or more, whatever you want to reinforce your hem. This wide hemmed area is ideal for installing the large hardware needed for trampoline. And this is what a taped edge should look like. The last hem that we have to show you is a drawstring sleeve, which is typically used on bags and covers. So we're gonna start by marking a small mark four inches down from the top on each side. So we're gonna measure four inches down on each side. Now we're gonna fold a triangle shaped fold all the way down to each mark. So we're gonna start at the mark and fold this triangle shape all the way up. And we're gonna hold that fold in place with some fabric clips. And it should look like this. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. And there's both sides folded. Now we're gonna sew these folds into place. This is what the edges should look like once you've sewn them. Now we're gonna apply a piece of quarter inch basting tape to the top edge. Then we're gonna remove the transfer paper. So we're just gonna fold this down to create a quarter inch hem at the top. Then we're gonna apply another piece of basting tape on top of that one. And this time we're gonna fold it all the way down to the four inch mark that we made like so. But before we do so, we're gonna place our drawstring in the pocket. And this is just an example, so we just have a piece of 
rope here. Just like this, and then we're gonna sew along that fold. Now we're gonna go ahead and sew up the fabric piece and then turn it right side out to show you the finished drawstring hem. So here is the finished drawstring hem. So you would just pull on the rope and there you have it. Those are a handful of basic hems that all kinds of sewers use. Now if you've missed any of our previous learning to sew videos, we've linked a full playlist in the description below so that you can catch up. And if you're looking for a project to start your sewing journey, we have plenty of DIY project videos ranging from beginners all the way through more experienced sewers. Make sure to subscribe to our two YouTube channels, Sailrite Workbench and Sailrite DIY, because you won't want to miss out on the hundreds of free video resources there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time for part five of our Learning to Sew series.